I made these comic book style fists for my VR game where you punch things, and in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how I did it in Unreal Engine 5 without using post-processing. It's completely in the shaders. The first part of this setup is that classic halftone shading look. To do this in the shader, rather than using post-processing, since this is just a one-off object in the game, I had to fake the lighting in the shader. To do this, you can grab the dot product between the vertex normal and the direction you want the light to point. Now, I'm not good at vector math it's one of the greater mysteries of life to me but the gist of it is assuming both of your vectors have a magnitude of one which is what the normalized node does if they're pointing in the same direction you get a value of one or white and if they're pointing in the opposite direction you get a value of negative one or darker than black and everything in between is a value between one and negative one go figure Applied to the shader, it looks something like this. Then we can remap this value range using Unreal's convenient remap node to isolate the highlights and the shadows. Now at this point, we need a tileable dot pattern to represent those halftone dots. To do this, I hopped into Photoshop and overlaid some circle gradients like this. I'm using a gradient so I can easily remap the black and white points to get dots of different sizes. So if we take this dot pattern and add it to our remapped dot product, the dots in the highlights are brightest and the dots in the shadows shadows are darkest. So if we do some math to remap this range so that everything below our specified value is black, the dots progressively get smaller as it goes from white to black. Also, as a side note, in my node setup, this value acts as the spread from white to black, so a higher value will make the transition blurrier. Then we finish it off with a saturate node because some of the values can be darker than black and brighter than white, which we don't want. Next, I made three different textures, one for the highlights, midtones, and shadows, and used the dot patterns we just made as masks to blend between them. Throw it all together, and it looks something like this. I think it looks pretty cool, but would you believe me if I said this was the easy part? Before we get to the hard part though, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy these kinds of technical breakdowns or if you just want to stay up to date on my projects. Now, the second part of this setup is that nice thick outline that goes around the fists. And this part almost made me lose my mind. I'm also going to warn you, the solution is pretty niche and probably not ideal for most projects, but it is cool and maybe you'll learn something useful along the way. A popular way of doing outlines without post-processing is duplicating the object, ballooning it out using the world position offset, and then making it so you can only see the backside of the polygons. Picture it like a one-way mirror. While this method looked okay, it caused some artifacts around the fingers, and I really wanted to hand paint those outlines anyway. So my next idea was to still balloon out the duplicate, but then use a trick. If you scale an object from the position of the camera, it looks like it's staying in place. So I figured I could use the world position offset to scale out the outline object or scale in the fist itself. An easy way to do this is to get the direction from the camera to each vertex, or vice versa, and then multiply that by whatever distance we want to offset it. Since each vertex is moving its own direction down its own path, it just scales the object up and down from the camera. And this also technically worked, but the separation between the two objects caused some visual issues. I knew I was on the right track, I just needed the fist to stay close to its original bounds. So I figured, what if I scaled each point of the fist from the camera position a different amount to sort of squish and flatten the fist while still looking correct from the camera. That way I could fit the fist and the outline close to within the original bounds while still putting the fist in front of the outline. I hope that made sense. This is very hard to explain. But anyway, here's how the math works out for that. First, we take the camera position and subtract the vertex position and normalize it. This gives us the direction from the vertex to the camera. Then we want to figure out the amount to multiply by the direction for each vertex. Each one needs to be multiplied by a different amount, otherwise we're still just scaling the entire object to and from the camera. So for that, first we get the distance between the camera and the vertex. Multiplying our direction by this number alone will scale the object all the way back to the camera. So then, from that, we subtract the distance between the camera and the object's location, or origin. And I know all of this sounds really complicated, but let's just take a second to picture what this actually does. 
If the vertex is further from the camera than the origin, we end up with a positive number. Multiplied by our direction, that'll move it towards the camera. If the vertex is closer to the camera than the origin, that'll give us a negative number, pushing it away from the camera when multiplied. So when this math is applied to each vertex on the object, it squishes our object in, nice and flat, while still looking correct from the camera. But we still have two things we need to take care of. For one, being completely flat causes some glitchy shading issues with the overlap overlapping polygons. We can fix this by multiplying everything we've done here by a squish factor. One being completely squished, zero being not squished at all. Nice. And two, we need to be able to offset our distance so we can move the fist in front of the outline. We can do this by just subtracting an arbitrary value from the distance between the object and the camera. Great. Put it all together, do the exact same thing for the outline while still keeping the ballooning math, and bing bang boom, we have two objects that are flattened, offset, and still look correct from the perspective of the camera. Neat. And finally, I needed a cool particle effect for these comic book fists for when you punch things. So I threw together an animation in After Effects. This is just basic motion design, but I had a lot of fun with it. Then I used a cool plugin from AE Scripts called Sheeta to export it as a sprite sheet. Throw the whole thing together and it looks something like this. I think it turned out pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the comments. Hopefully you found some of this interesting and can even apply bits and pieces of it to your own projects. Also, let me know if you want me to upload the shader somewhere, like maybe the Unreal Marketplace or something. And if you wanna see more videos like this or just wanna stay up to date on my game, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button down below. Until next time, bye.